And we're live. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Oh, do, do I? Do I go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am. <laughs> I am KK Reaper. I am Tic Tac. And I am Penny. <laughs> and we are the live band of KK Reaper. I play keyboards. Tic Tac uh, plays bass. I am voice. <laughs> Your voice. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, our guitarist, uh, Two Cuts, couldn't make it to this interview, so uh, we will have to suffice. He's, he's feeling under the weather. Yeah. His cut got, his cuts got infected. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> God. So and what have you got for us tonight? Joey, you want to start? Uh, yeah, I can start. Uh, Joey with uh, Joey Lowe, Living Dead Recordings, uh, playing Happy Hour Homicide. I've uh, been checking out your guys' videos recently. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if you know much about uh, Living Dead Recordings or the other band I play in, Dragnon. I got a pretty extensive history with horror punk, and I get a big feel of that with you guys. So, uh, you got any influences like that? Well, so actually, it's funny. Um, when we started out with the, the previous band, KK Reaper and the Carnage of Chaos, um, we were definitely more geared towards the horror punk thing, I think, with that band. And then when we all sort of fell off and I started doing the solo stuff, um, it took on more of a, a, a shock rock feel, but we still tried to keep some of the horror punk elements and all that. Like it takes a, a whole bunch of influences. Uh, my major one is Alice Cooper. I love Alice Cooper, um, Rob Zombie, um, Slipknot, you know, all those, any, any band that has like some sort of in this moment, we just recently saw me in Tic Tac. Yeah, and like going back to that, like listening to like horror punk we did with our, our last band, we uh, a big popular to the uh, to the item uh, to the audience in the uh, Carnage of Chaos was we always performed a, a cover of Last Caress by the Misfits, oh, which yeah. is a fun song to play. And okay. there was there's a funny story where uh, my mother had come to our first show. We had performed this song. She she enjoyed Last Caress, even though how morbid its lyrics are. Yeah, and <laughs> was her and my sister were convinced. That we wrote that song. <laughs> I Seriously? wish. Nice. No, my mom and sister straight up thought, thought we wrote Last Caress. We that did. That's that's our song. <laughs> it's our it's our song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, I can definitely pick up the Rob Zombie and uh, I can I can pick up that influence. I like the song. Uh, the video that I like the most so far, what I've seen is Mistress of the Freaks. Yeah. Thanks. That's, that's one of my faves so far. Thank you. Um, yeah, Mistress was, um, it's funny because when we were writing the album, um, I had written Mistress uh, originally with the intent for it to be on the second album with the Carnage of Chaos band. And when that fell through before we started recording, I took the, you know, the stuff that I had written for it and just repurposed it. Um, so the structurally it was fine the the lyrics from when it was with carnies of chaos was supposed to be part of the storyline for the the carnies um so i had to change the lyrics over to be about something just in general and uh i originally was going to make it mistress of the dark and i was going to make it a song about elvira yeah but i was like struggling with that and i was like what do i write about like what do i say that's not like go like too goofy or anything because it's very you know it's waltz timing it's very slow very melodic so i wanted it to be a little bit more serious than some yeah. of the other stuff you know um and i ended up just one day at like stroke of luck just like a stream of consciousness consciousness moment where i was writing the lyrics and i was like all right this works and i just like i just kept rolling with it i was like it doesn't have to make perfect like it doesn't have to be a reference to anything it just has to flow um and eventually it just became about um this uh entity that is you know the, the mistress of the freaks uh, my friend uh, luna reaper who plays um the mistress in the music video and uh she is this guide that brings spirits from the afterworld to this realm just for you know for a moment to uh enjoy the pleasures that they enjoyed in their previous lives before they go back to the the afterworld. Um, That's so cool. that you know we just we just sort of rolled with that theme, and then when we started doing the music video, I was like, all right, now we just have to exemplify that, and we kind of uh, took all these people that um, you know from Snaggletooth Production, um, Ryan and Nick. Uh, those were the two. Um, Ryan was the director, and then Nick was 
helping out on set. They're both part of the same production team. And uh, Ryan brought their friends on board uh, to help out to be the ghouls. And I brought on Luna, you know, to be the mistress. And it just sort of worked. It worked out really well in that way. We found an abandoned building. Um, Fun, fun fact, the, the coffin at the end that all the ghouls go into, um, originally I was going to go to Spirit Halloween Store and get one of those collapsible ones because okay. that's, you know, just for ease of access. Yeah. Um, they were sold out by the time we had started looking. So by stroke of luck, I had gone on to Facebook Marketplace, typed in coffin, and there was somebody selling that that giant seven-foot beautiful wood coffin for 40 bucks on Marketplace, seven minutes away from where the, the shooting nice location was. That. What luck. Yeah, it was wow. it was insane. That, it, 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 I couldn't have asked for like a better lineup in that moment. <laughs> another interesting yeah, definitely. Fact, another interesting fact about that video, the bass I'm playing is not real. It is, yeah. a, it is a shelf. It is a shelf. Yeah. It actually belongs to the teacher who taught me bass, so everything kind of comes full circle there. It was, it was basically just a shelf. When you opened it up, it basically just you put stuff in it. At one point, he puts the uh, he put the fog machine in it. If you actually see, that's how we got that effect of like it rolling out through the f holes in the in yeah. the bass. The, yeah. the, another interesting fact is wow. if you ever see in the music video when I'm playing that in the room and the smoke's coming out of it, KK is sitting on the couch just doing one of those. Like yeah. yeah, and uh, that couch since the the building we the building we had filmed that in was it was it's been abandoned. Although our videographer uh, Nick from Snaggletooth uh, knew. Uh, knew something. I think I think him or his father knew the owner of the yeah, of like the property. Yeah. So we went and fil- we went and like filmed there in the warehouse, and it looked like he had a ba- it had been abandoned because like like I said like the closest thing that like it was like time cards on the on the on the thing from like a like a oh yeah uh, and like, the last like like dated like document there was like two thousand one, but uh but the everything the thing was so dusty and old that when <laughs> KK sat on that couch and sat back up his. He just left a giant ass print <laughs> on the couch, and there was and there was just dust covering. Him. I, I was wearing like the same like the black pants, and my ass was just green. <laughs> so, that's, that's how, I mean, the couch was nice because it was old, it was vintage, it had like a like a wood handle and stuff, so like it, it fit in with the decor that we were going for. But it was just dusty as hell. The piano that I um, was playing on in that video. The, the um, harpsichord. Yeah, it's the not harpsichord. a real harpsichord. Um, it's yeah. not a real harpsichord. The inside of it was an actual uh, 88 key Yamaha keyboard. But the outside of it was a uh, painted and constructed uh, construct, bleh, constructed facade of a harpsichord. So that was also a that, really fun yeah. thing. This guy spaced in all night building. I, I, was, yeah. I was at my house probably. This is, I, I'm the worst with this in terms of time management. Uh, I will always, probably to the day I die, make props the day before the shoot. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I was up, I, I was I was drinking uh, a mixture of Red Bulls and White Claws. Which and you just, really shouldn't. Yeah, probably not. Uh, <laughs> You might as well start taking Jaeger bombs. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> um, and trying my darndest to construct this thing in that in that moment. The next day, um, my stepfather came out, looked at all the the um, the measurements that I had taken. He was like, "Yeah, these are completely off." <laughs> so we had to like re- redesign the whole thing, and it, like we managed. But when I tell you, it was like the the director came to pick me up like minutes before we had just put the finishing touches on it. That's exactly how it went down. Another interesting fact. Another interesting fact is, uh, it fell apart at the end of the shoot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the shoot it fell apart. The the keyboard as it was resting on it just started to the wood just sort of like right. basically yeah. the nails came out and basically the wood was just ro- yeah. like rotting. And I I felt it like wobble while I was trying to play it. And I'm just like no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we, how long did it take to shoot that video? Um, uh, we the, did, the band shots were just one night because it was just one night in the warehouse. The other shots, I think, were like two or three. So, or yeah, I, I think it was three days in total if you count the B-roll footage that I had shot with Luna Reaper um, prior to signing up with Snaggletooth to finish the uh, the music video. Because I had originally just taken... Uh, I, I had taken some B-roll with her to um, kind of map out how I wanted it to look. So we went to like all these different cemeteries. I had her like walk through the cemeteries with the roses. That's the one clip that you see when she throws the rose on the grave. Um, 
so those those clips were uh, me and her just filming alone with each other for uh, the first day. And then the band shots, after we had signed up with Snaggletooth, they did the band shots for us. And then we did the uh, in the warehouse shots. And that was the last day of shooting. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, the but... overall project looked great. I mean, Thank pretty you. awesome video. Thank Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go. Ryan, Nick, and whoever else involved did a phenomenal job. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Snaggletooth. Snaggletooth did an awesome job. With, <laughs> with, with that and the uh, conception <laughs> video as well. Yeah. That, that, that was a fun one. Ryan and Nick are just a blast to work with mm -hmm. anyway. So it's just like, it makes it all the more <laughs> worth it when you're working with people you know and you're working with, you know, a crew that can joke and banter with you and have fun with it, but still kind of stay serious with like yeah. trying to get everything. It's, it's, a, good, it's yeah. a good mix. Nice. So, what's your favorite horror movie? Um, you might as well just be saying, "Oh, fuck you!" <laughs> 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 Don't put that kind of pressure he has on him. <laughs> okay, I well, would, I would definitely say that the top tier. I always say my my top five because I'm a big slasher freak. I love '80s slasher films. All like that's pretty much my go-to. Um, they're my feel-good movies, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, okay, but uh, it's always it. Friday the 13th as a franchise is always the top. Um, and then in no particular order, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, and Scream are like, that's those are my go-tos all the time. Contrary to popular belief, I have no favorite horror movies because I've been trying to get over my fear of <laughs> horror movies. Um, really? Yeah, I'm not really a horror person, but I did start watching horror movies recently to try and conquer my fear of them. And I would say my two favorite as of right now are It, the original one with Tim Curry, and, okay. and John Carpenter's The Thing. Nice. Okay. Mostly just because of mostly just because it's like it's that old style horror, so there's a lot of prosthetics, there's a lot of props, there's a lot yeah. of like construction that goes into it. I am more inclined to being like, oh, I know that, you know, this was made from like liquid latex or like bubble gum silicone or like melted like silicone. Yeah. So it's like, I know it's not real. I know it's, you know, it's a physical thing. Yes. But it's been constructed out of like the, the dumbest things and it looks scary, but I know it's not scary at the same time because it's campy. I also really yeah. enjoy The Exorcist. There's a certain level with the, with the uh, again, just 80s movies in general, you know, 80s horror. Um, <laughs> the uncanny valley of practical effects makes it so much more entertaining to watch, in my opinion, than CGI and everything being done in post-production in later horror films today. Yeah. So okay. that that is one of the big selling points. Especially considering CGI has gotten to the point where it's like, it, you can make it look really realistic. And like, yeah. even if it isn't directly in front of you when they're acting on screen, the way it jumps out at you nowadays, it's like, holy actual shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, as, and as for me, something similar to Penny. Oh, I'm sorry. Are yeah. we not allowed to swear? I just, I, I curse. I just, uh, no, <laughs> you're okay. okay. okay yeah, I, no, uh, I didn't know you were going to have to put yeah. that out in post. Yeah. No, no, you're good. Uh, <laughs> as for me, it's similar to Penny. I don't have a specific fit. Actually, my biggest introduction to them is this guy. And we spent many nights at the Haunted Manor in uh, Kings in Kingsburg, New Jersey, of him showing me these on a garbage fine DVD player. Yeah. And he had shown me a ton of them. And he's like, I, I did enjoy some like uh, growing up. Like, I actually, I was, I tell the story to everyone all the time is I was way too young to be watching Scream. <laughs> and I, I was watching Scream when I was like five. So that was, that was a really fun one. Although, I, 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 like similar to Penny, I enjoy the uh, the orig now when it comes to like the Stephen King's it movies, the the one from like '89 I like because Tim Curry did a phenomenal job in it. But as a movie, it's kind of okay. The new movies are better as movies, but uh, Bill Skarsgård didn't do it for me. But uh, but yeah, and I started I started enjoying horror movies not in a way that they, that they they scare me, more in a way that they make me laugh. Like I I like Chucky and. And Freddy Krueger, I don't find scary. I find them funny. Yeah. If, I, if anything, it's it's more comical. Yeah. Especially in the late, like anything, anything that has a franchise like that, where you go from like the first like one or two, three films. Once it gets past like the third film, they just start going into uncharted territory because they run out of ideas. It, it becomes, it becomes so. It becomes self parody. Right. Like yeah. it becomes so. I mean, Jason in space, like. <laughs> who who said? Yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I don't know if you'd classify 
classify Carrie as horror necessarily, it, but that was still, a good, it's like it's a more supernatural thriller to me. I feel like right. because of yeah. only because of like the telekinesis element. Like I feel it's like it's like a sub subcategory. Yeah, of a little bit. That that movie also definitely was a lot of fun for me, and mostly just because I could very much relate to it. I was bullied in middle school like leading up towards high school and and then you like, your I entire saw, class on fire. <laughs> <laughs> i saw carrie and i was just like if only i had telekinesis yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> granted yeah. the last time i got bullied um a boy had like flipped up my skirt in the middle of the hall oh, i shit. socked him in the jaw and need him in the nuts and ran <laughs> nice nice <laughs> you just desserts. yeah right but, but no it's like they go to other different type of horror movies like i enjoy like the 1980s uh Version of the fly. Is it, would that be considered a horror movie? That's also yeah. 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 Right, 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 right. body it's horror. Yeah. yeah. But an another one now, this is technically considered like the first found footage movie. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I watched it. It's the only one that freaked me out was a cannibal holocaust from like mm. seven. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that movie, I, no movie really fun, but that movie, it's going back to you were saying about practical effects. Now, actually, some of the deaths are real, like the the like the, uh, the animal deaths are all real. Yeah, oh. yeah. But and but like the thing is like I was telling him, I think what what uh, KK told me was, I told him like what was the budget, and it was a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars, but adjusted for inflation, it's about three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. And you said because of how realistic the props look, I, you would say probably two hundred thousand of that th three hundred thousand went to the to the prop setting because literally, I should have watched that movie. and I was like, these people actually died. I actually, and to be honest, what happened was the director actually got arrested, and he had to prove in court that that he didn't kill his actors. Yeah. <laughs> That's how, like, that's, that's how, how real it was for the time, yeah. It's so fucked up. But that's, that's, I mean, you know, a lot of those movies, especially from that era, focused their uh, production budget more <laughs> on the effects and making it look as good as it did with all the, you know, the blood and all that, um, yeah. as opposed to, like, hiring, like, A-list actors. And I think that's the difference between horror back then and horror today, is that there's so much more of a focus on uh hyper realism and bringing in like these a-list actors to these films yeah. instead of focusing on what draws people to horror which is the yeah. the absolute carnage of it <laughs> cabin in the woods was a good example of that where it was sort of kind of like a parody of itself essentially yeah. they brought in like like chris hemsworth was the only one i recognized out of that entire cast right. mostly um and it was interesting to see like the the horror element of being a parody of itself but at the same time it kind of like you know, there was a lot going on behind the scenes, and it was just, it was interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, and, and another thing being is, like, I don't, do you remember this movie from a couple years ago? It was called, like, Mama or something like that? Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. movie was actually really freaking scary. Get but out, like, it's freaky. Yeah, but, but hey, yeah. nothing ever really came of it. Like, it was popular, like, the year it came out, and then everyone forgot about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of disappointing. You mentioned um you mentioned the Scream franchise, um, and I just saw this myself last night. Did you know that there's another Scream movie coming? Yeah, we actually January. saw it when we went to go see Halloween Kills. That was one of the uh, commercials, the coming attraction. Yeah, I, yeah, I had no idea about this until I saw the trailer last night. And it actually doesn't look too bad. Like, it might be all right. I mean, I, I, I brought I, back most of the original cast. And, of course, Nick Campbell is, like, amazing. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love the, the, the fact that it's, um, you know, the, the two things from the trailer that got me that I was like, oh, shit, like, it's going to be, like, really good was um, – uh, I'm Sydney Prescott. Of course, I have a gun. That and <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. and freaking um, the hello, Sydney. It's an honor. I was like, oh shit. I was so, like, yeah. So we got ourselves a brand new ghost. Yeah, face, it's so. cool. It's cool that it's like you know the the ghost face killers are like super fans of the like the murders inside the film. Yeah. Like, yeah. Also, that, that box thing is still following me on the screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. That I got my like, head in a box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out how to remove that for future uh, reference, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to ramble about the horror films this entire time. We got we got off on a tangent there. Yeah, that's fine. So, what is your favorite part about being a musician, and your least favorite part? That's for all four of you. Uh, I guess I'll go first. My least favorite part is everything. <laughs> 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 Personally, for me, uh, it, it, this is very interesting because I, because I tell people this. I'm and uh, I'm a mus I'm a musician in certain ways, and in certain ways I'm not. I, I suck at writing music. I can't write music to save my life, but I can perform music very very well and learn and learn existing things very well. Mm -hmm. And one thing being is like I think with 
what comes to that comes also showmanship too. Because if you've ever seen, obviously we haven't done any shows live yet, but if, if you even see our when I used to be in the Carnies of Chaos, um, I never really uh, dulled away from my showmanship on stage, and and that was a lot of fun. I love seeing crowd, even to like the most minimal crowd. It's so fun to get up on the stage and just kind of. It's almost like a euphoria. It, it, yeah. it, it, it's almost like it's almost like a, like a kind of like a it's kind of like a high you get. Uh, and it's a lot. It's a lot of fun, and I love performing. I've actually done it a ton since I was a child. I would you know, like sing in my talent show at, in elementary school, things like that. So I always enjoyed it. And I've been playing bass since I was about like twelve years old, and uh, you know, I was because I was inspired by like Paul McCartney and Shavo from System of a Down and things like that. And so, so I think those are the good things. The bad things is uh, I think the worst thing about being a musician is that it doesn't. It, it unfortunately hard to make a Hence very me. very good financial living off of it yeah. unless you're like super super huge yeah. and uh dealing with other music i think from our both our experience dealing with uh musicians who uh who aren't hot shit who think they're hot shit yeah it's less of being business give us dealing with e dealing with other shithead musicians that's a, i mean like number one rule about being a musician i feel like should always be that you should be modest and kind to your other like you know, people temporary. that you play with, um, yeah, definitely. Other yeah. other bands that you play with live, uh, your crew, anybody oh, yeah, that you know, you sound. Because I mean, like at the end of the day, not like you know, if you're a musician in the band and you're a shithead to the people in the band, um, you're gonna get kicked out. If you're a shithead to other bands, you're not gonna get on the same shows as those bands, which is a big. And if you're crush. a shithead to to. Um, to to your crew or the or the venue or the venue's crew, they're gonna, gonna make you sound like shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it's basically cutting off your nose to spite your face. Right. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, you know, you're all working as one collective team, no matter who's involved with. Like, you know, even if they're not your people, if they're the venue's people, whoever it is, like right down to the bartender, like everyone there is there to help you kind of navigate how you're putting on the show and how your fans enjoy the show and all that. So. There's no reason to be like an asshole about it. <laughs> I'm, the same no, as, uh, I'm the same as TikTok a little bit where it comes to, um, you know, I've been doing music for like the longest time ever since I can remember. I kind of like tried to pick up instruments here and there. Like I did violin when I was in elementary school. I have been relearning piano because I used to play it really well when I was a kid, but I fell out of it because I I didn't want to practice. I'm a huge procrastinator. That's just kind of my own shtick. <laughs> um as far as like being like my favorite part about being a musician, it's just been like it's playing with crowds and enjoying the spotlight in general. I feel like I just love, you know, playing music and bringing happiness, you know, wherever I spread it, you know, I'll play ukulele with my dad while he plays guitar. Um, he's, he and I have been playing music since like I was a teeny tiny kid. Um, and um, of course, more recently, like practicing with these two goons has been a lot of fun as well. Um, just relearning the instruments and for once in my life, not being in like the main spotlight. So it's been kind of fun to kind of just be like a backing musician. Um, and then of course I have my own, project um that is a full band at present and we're undergoing a name and genre change at present leaning less away from like pop punk and more towards um like rat girl grunge like late 2000s kind of like hardcore rock type uh type sound mm -hmm. so okay. it um yeah no it's it's it, and, and it's and it's paying tremendous dividends to the point where it's like i'm rewriting a lot of my old stuff i'm trying to get my stuff out there i think the, I think the only part I dislike about it is just hauling the gear sometimes because I'm not I'm not in the best of shape <laughs> at present, so it's just like strong. sometimes it gets it's, sometimes it gets like a little um, stressful to like have a lot of gear and carrying it around. Um, I have more gear in this band, ironically, but I have less gear in the project where I'm lead singing and doing all the stuff. So it's just kind of like as long as I don't have to do too much in my in my own project, I can just kind of keep the balance where I you know, haul the, how, haul the most out of the rest of us in this project. So. And we also, we have, um, luckily, um, to our benefit, our roadie, uh, Zero is like phenomenal with, you know, he's, he's always there for us. He's always there for the shows and stuff. And, um, for the most part, like when we go up and, you know, when we're setting up stage, he's right there setting up the whole stage. And when we're off stage, we're able to go off 
and like go to the merch stand and talk to the fans and stuff. And Zero's right there just taking care of everything. So like in terms of live shows, we're totally set with him. Uh, we're looking into getting another roadie so that way he doesn't have to take on that whole workload himself. Yeah. But like he's he's so happy to do, like that's the coolest thing too. Again, like you know, going back to when you take care of your your people, they take care of you. Like you know, we treat Zero as one of the family, and so as a result, he's so thrilled to like come to the shows and just be able to like say like, oh, I got to see a free concert, so of course I'll help you like tear down your your set and stuff. Like essentially, you yeah. know. So that that's a really cool aspect of that. Yeah. Um, I would say for for me. Um, with the with the musicianship of uh, doing you know doing the live shows and all that, I, I would definitely say one of the best aspects of that is thinking well, going in with music that like you poured your heart and soul into and not knowing what the reception will be, and when you go up on the stage and everyone lights up for that, like that is so like that's so rewarding for like all the hard work that you put into a show, and I mean especially we're not uh by any means like an easy um easy production so when we go ahead and we do the show like we want to put on not just us going up and playing the songs but we want to be up there and uh you know bringing people up on stage to sing with us for certain parts of songs and we uh you know um throw throw condoms into the crowd and all this crazy shit it's all very and, theatrical and that's the, one of the coolest things about the the theatrical aspect of it and at least from from my experience with the carnies like you know tic-tac said we we haven't actually played a gig um as the kk reaper solo group only because we're uh minus a drummer right now and we're trying to find somebody if there but, is a drummer out there in yeah. the world if you're watching this please right <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes, again, asking you for a because <laughs> we we we've all been practicing. We've been practicing to the backing tracks and stuff like that just to keep our chops up. But um, you know, once we get a drummer in and they get acclimated to the songs, we're pretty much ready to hit the road. Yeah. Um, but when it came to making it theatrical, one of the things, like I said, obviously Alice Cooper is a major influence on on me at the very least. Um, I noticed that it brings all kinds, not just metalheads and rockers. And so one of the most rewarding things about that was, uh, at least, you know, in my experience with the Carnies, was that even though we were playing heavy stuff and it was, you know, rock, metal, punk, alternative, whatever you want to call it, um, no matter what, the group, the fans that were drawn in, even if they were, you know, hip hop heads, pop people, rap, any, you know, any other genre, the reason they kept coming back was because they loved the energy that we gave on stage with everything going on, despite the music and that they felt like they were part of the show. Like they got to be in the spotlight. And that's something that we, we pride ourselves on trying to give that opportunity to people that come out to see us because, you know, without the fans, we wouldn't be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Essentially. What would, um, Who's your, like, of the band you played with, what would you say would be your favorite show? Um, like your, your, so far, like, your favorite band to play with? Definitely, I, there's there's a couple. Yeah. I know um, Elephant Killer was one of our favorites. Um, the first time we met those guys, we played a show in, we, should, we played a showcase show at uh, the Knitting Factory in Brooklyn. And uh, we were backstage you know, waiting to go on. We were putting our makeup on and all that stuff. And I remember the first thing that uh, Enrique, the uh, the singer and the guitarist, uh, he came in to to the dressing room and he, he looks at us. He's you know, putting the makeup on. At the time, I was dressed like the ringleader for the Carnies theatric and all that. And uh, he was like, oh, my God, you guys look fucking awesome, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then he just he looks around at all of us. And he's like, hey, you guys, you guys want to party? <laughs> and he does this. I was like, I remember look because we hadn't gone on stage yet. My number one rule is I don't care what you do when we're off stage, but before we go on, I want nobody touching anything. You know, I want everyone to be as in the zone as they possibly can be. So I remember like I was like, uh -huh, like you know, like looking at you know, just being nice to him. But I looked at the rest of the band. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I do not. <laughs> There's um, a thing about Elephant Killer was. Um, uh, was that uh, Enrique, the, the guitarist and vocalist? He would all he would often like when he uh, when he would go on stage, 
Because their style is more hardcore punk and almost like borderline like 80s thrash with a how it yeah. like, He almost sounds like Tom Araya of, uh, of Slayer right? In, like the early 80s. Um, but he, he would often play his guitar with a machete and he'd be like... Yeah. <laughs> he'd <laughs> run a real machete across the strings. I was like, Which, I'm like how, the, how the hell is this man walking in with a machete? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> And how the hell does the machete up. not like friggin' ruin the strings? That too, yeah. <laughs> he, he must be, he must be using like the side of it. But uh, yeah, he, yeah. Dude, we like only slide. did we did um, that show, and then we invited him out to New Jersey uh, to play a show with us at the Saint in Asbury Park because Love you know at that great. point, yeah, great it's a great band. Yeah, so we've never Love had a bad show there. Yeah, um, but yeah, so uh, we invited them out to play with us because at that point we had like talked to them so much. And especially after the show, I had a couple of beers, all that at the, at the knitting factory and it was a great time. So we invited them out and um, I forget, did, did we go on before them or after them? We went on after them. We went on yeah, after them. Okay. for like the last one because so, you guys had a long ass set. <laughs> right, right. So yes. Yeah, so, the video's on YouTube for anyone who wants to see it. <laughs> oh yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we were, uh, uh, we were watching them play and we you know the mosh pit started going we were in the mosh pit with everyone like you know and you know because again we we just uh, love them and we have uh uh you know the tombstone set up on the stage and all that at the time and uh enrique was wearing a dress and he had i guess like his boxers underneath it or something so he takes off his boxers in the middle of the show and he starts showing his ass in the middle of the show <laughs> and uh he threw the boxers and i caught them and i i had like i was uh, I had a couple of drinks at this point, um, and I, <laughs> I every story. Yes, yeah, I had I had his boxers in my teeth like the whole time, just like wagging them around, like absolute wild shit. And then uh, we we went on the uh, you know after them, and I still had the underwear. I had the underwear on my head like almost the entire set. I eventually put them on one of the tombstones, and uh, he came he came up during our set when we were doing um, violent pornography. We were doing a cover of violent porno, and. Uh, he just starts going like in the microphone as like the song is ending. He's just KK Reaper is the man. KK Reaper, like it just really all like for for the amount of people that were there, you know, it's not like we drew in like a hundred people into like these cramped areas. Like it was like 20, 30 people, Leo, you know, something like that. So easy, easy crowd. But it felt like there was hundreds of people crammed in there with the way that people were just bouncing off the walls. And uh mm -hmm. after the show, when we finally got off, there's pictures of it with uh Enrique, uh, you know, I, I pulled down my pants. Enrique's like grabbing my ass on, on the camera. Um, and uh, there's pictures of him and me playing tug of war with his underwear and stuff. And uh, he ended up, we were, we were drinking at the, I, I was drinking at the bar. I was getting Captain and Cokes because at the time that was like my drink of choice. And uh, he brought in his own personal bottle of Bacardi. Oh. And so I would be like halfway finished with my Captain and Coke. And then he would just top it off with all the Bacardi. And I was like, so I was I was slamming those back, and I was like, "This seems really potent," and I'm getting drunk really fast. What is happening? Um, so by the end of the night, it was like there's also a video somewhere of uh, we me and Enrique were trying to do like, uh, like Elephant Killer versus Carnage of Chaos video, and like pretending like there was some sort of feud between us. And I was just too drunk to be able to act like serious in that. There was one video where you guys like kissed. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what ended up happening. Like we were we were like fake fighting and i was just like i can't take it serious i love you man and like we started hugging and i just like i kissed them on the lips and there's a video of that on the internet um and then then that was just like i i don't remember much of the night after that <laughs> going back to another band we played with now we only played with them twi twice similar to elephant killer we only played with them twice mm -hmm. uh, it's the mary Lou's, and oh right yes the they, they they are the biggest sweethearts ever i love them but they <laughs> They, they themselves, it, it, it's kind of sad because like they often are pl mostly playing in Philly, uh, like P Pennsylvania or Delaware or something like that. They're in New, in New York. The New Jersey dates are few and far between. But the few times that they have played here, we played with them, and they, and we've had such a fun time with them. They're, That's they're, how I, I was. I was christened their their um, pumpkin Jack Black slash zombie meatloaf. That's how they described <laughs> me when I was on stage. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. I, 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 I agree. agree. <laughs> that was the second show the ever did, and what we did, do we did that show with the Mary Lou's. Yeah, um, yeah. KK, KK would cover himself in blood, and the blood would mix with the white of the skeleton, yeah. thus turning it orange. Right. And so we ended up turning from a skeleton into a pumpkin. It's like reverse Jack Skellington. Yeah, right. pretty much. <laughs>
But yeah, that, but yeah, the Marylou's are phenomenal. Are a phenomenal band. It's like I would love to go back on, on the road with them. If maybe we could do actually do like a full co-headlining tour, but also like they, their shows, like I said, are few and far between. Yeah, yeah. So fun fact: I did not. Um, I wanted to be part of the original Carnies of Chaos tree uh, group. Um, back when it was still in its kind of, I guess, heyday of sorts. Um, but I have not played a show with them yet, and I will be making my onstage debut with the with this band with the solo, yeah. as soon as like we get our first show. Yeah. Um, so personally Hopefully for so. me, outside of, um, I, guess, I, guess, I guess since like the only other thing I have is my own project, so... You play that like, with, with... Yeah, so technically speaking, um, I think, honestly, yeah, my favorite show that I've ever played personally was with the Carnies of Chaos when I met them for the first time. This was back in June of 2019, um, and I was enlisted to help with a Pride Benefit show that was going on at a local venue with Tom's River. And so... Um, they ended up being like the headliners of the show and I got to meet them and see them and like see the whole shtick for the first time. I was very like scared and like <laughs> abused at the same time. So scared just, but intrigued. Yeah, because like the the intro to Red Ticket came on and I was just like, what is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> so um it was just it was just a lot of fun. The the space that we played in, um, the clubhouse was a bit on the cramped side, but that's just because they hadn't yep. like gone to the yeah full venue yet you know. um yep. it, was, it was still fun to like see the show in person and like um be able to finally play with my own like full band granted my guitarist was already um confirmed but um uh, did my... you have charlotte playing like the cajon or something like that yeah i, I had a a, 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 fr a, blah, 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 a mutual friend of ours named charlotte uh was on cajon at at the time and um my buddy andy was on bass only just because at the last minute my the, the guy who was supposed to drum for me was out of the uh, was out of the state that weekend, and um, an uh, another thing happened where I just did not have a bassist in time, so I ended up enlisting those two, um, and we played like a mix of like acoustic um, electric set, and then um, it was a couple more people down the line. It was kind of like a mix of different artists, so like you had a couple acoustic, a couple electric, um, you had. A couple poets here and there. My friend Kat was a poet. Um, Lizzie Montague, who was a, a poet, was also in it. Um, and then they were the last to go on. And so it was interesting to like see the experience firsthand. And at one point or another, he had told me, hey, we're looking for a keyboardist still. And I was just like, oh, I very barely know keyboards. But <laughs> if you have anything you can show me, I would I love to I try. Have the rest <laughs> is history. <yeah>. Yep. <laughs> That's how we, we ended up, uh, when we parted ways with Carnies, I had uh, reached back out to uh, Penny for originally uh, the song Concessions, um, the backup chance, the, hey, no, I want to go, that's, that's Penny on those. Yep. Um, Four so times. Originally, that was the extent of it, and then I was like, hey, like, I know that you wanted to do keyboards for Carnies, do you want to do keyboards for this instead? And she was like, yeah, sure. So that's how we ended up. Uh, yeah, same, yeah. same with me. It's like, well, I played bass for you once. And well, <laughs> I, I, I'm here again. He's back again. <laughs> uh, against your better judgment. Better around us. Right. Sorry about us going out of tangent. We have a habit of doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have a fan question. All any, right. any favorite crew stories? Any favorite crew stories? Yeah. Um, we only have one member of the crew. We only had one member of the crew. Well, technically Lilith, too. I mean, as, as merch, you know. Um, this is coming from Brittany. Oh, oh of course it is. Yeah, so, that's, that's Lilith. That's Lilith. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you're, um, so, yeah, uh, I would say, I mean, there, there is definitely a handful of them. It's, it's kind of going back to Carney's ears, which is very blurry for me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Definitely, there's been a lot of times where, like, the, the one time that we left a show... Um, Are you going to tell the story of Songs of Serenity? Maybe well, I, I can do that one, story. too, yeah. Um, I'll do that one briefly. But, yeah, the uh, there was one time we were leaving the Brighton Bar, and we were uh, fini we finished the show. It was late at Rest night. We were, <laughs> yeah, I know. Rip. Um, <laughs> un unfortunate, but... Um, it's a shame. That venue was so good. Yeah, but uh, we... Um, 
we left there. It was pretty late. We packed up all our stuff and we all got into our separate cars and we all uh, were going to, I think, IHOP or something like that afterwards. Yeah. And uh, no, no, it was equal was right down the block from Brighton. This was like I remember yeah. we drove like a decent Fair distance. Enough, yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> but uh yeah, so we we were all going our separate ways. I was in the car with Zero. Um Tic Tac was in the car with Cardiac. Cardiac, yep. Um and our, then, our drummer during the carnies. And then uh Yeti and Nick's were in their own car. And when we all went to IHOP. All three of us at different points. Was it all three of us, or, or was it just? I thought it was just. No, all three of us. Oh, got, really? All, all three cars got stopped. All three cars got stopped by the police, <laughs> and all three had the same reaction. They came up to the window, sir. Do you know why? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they saw us covered in like fake blood and face paint. And they're like, "Where are you coming from?" <laughs> we were just like, it, "It's just, it's just a show. It, it's not real. Like everyone's fine." <laughs> the interesting story. That same thing would happen is I think we were driving. Me and our former drummer were driving back from from the Brighton during that same night. And when we got pulled over, we were, I think, in Atlantic Highlands. And it was such a bullshit reason we got pulled over. Uh, because, quote, my father had put a grateful debt. You know, like the cut, like those frames that can go on license plates? Yeah. My father had put a grateful dead one on. And these cops decided to pull me over for that. And <laughs> so we get pulled over and because because he has a habit of not shutting his mouth, our our former drummer oh Cardiac God, yeah. uh, was muttering under his breath, "Why are these fucking guys busting our ball?" And decided when the when the cop asked me asked me, "Have you been drinking?" He saw took one look at me covered in freaking face paint and blood, and just went, "Have you been drinking tonight?" Before I could answer, my asshole drummer next to me goes, uh, "He hasn't, but I have." <laughs> and then immediately, and then immediately the cop. Snaps at him and then drags me out of the car to do a sobriety test. Sir, step out of the car. Oh and well, I, I well I was sober, so yeah. So I'm everyone sorry. driving by, the thing to see a guy covered with wearing trip pants, a a black muscle shirt, and face paint, doing a sobriety test on the floor. That must have been a sight to see. <laughs> I'm honestly sorry, I wasn't around for these. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, the one time the the song songs of serenity. Uh, what that is actually based on is what I was describing the earlier, right the uh, the night with Elephant Killer where uh, he was pouring Bacardi's into my Captain and Coke and all that. Um, our our roadie Zero uh, was always my DD. Um, so anytime that we were leaving for shows, he would you know we we were just getting his van, we'd pack it up with whatever we could, and then we'd head back home. Um, he lives right around the block for me, so it worked out really well. But that particular night. I was annihilated because of Bacardi, Captain Coke, everything, shots, you know, just kept going that entire night. And the scene is really good in that way that um, Scott, the owner, used to, like, hook us up with free drinks all the time and stuff like that. So I was like, sure, you know, like, take full advantage. Um, but we uh, – uh, I was sitting at the bar, and I was buying rounds of shots for whoever was still there, just, like, completely off my rocker, not – really realizing what was going on. And eventually uh, Zero goes up behind me, looks at uh, Scott and goes like, like, just cut him off. Like, just cut it. Like we got to go. And he's very drunk. Like just, you know, so, um, (laughs) so Zero actually pretty much carries me out of this venue. Um, Brings me to his car, like just sort of throws my limp body into the passenger seat and then gets in the car and starts driving. Now, at this point, I had completely blacked out. I don't remember anything past that point. But apparently, as he was driving down the highway, I was like, eh? and he, was, he was like, acoustic guitar. oh, yeah, I had my the, the acoustic guitar uh, didn't have a case. So the acoustic guitar would go in between my legs. Um, and uh, he heard that and he was like, oh, shit. And he rolled down my window. And I got most of it out the window. Like I threw up out the window, but like. Even for like for a while after that, the headstock of my acoustic had like a little bit of throw up on it at the side of his car door. I had to clean up the next morning. Um, yeah, it was it was a bad scene, Uh-oh. but nevertheless, uh, when you got to your house, we you collapsed. Yeah, a famous picture of uh, was taken. So we we got back to my house. Um, it was like three a.m. at this point, and uh, we pulled in front of my house, and I'm still trying to figure out motor skills. So I. 
<laughs> open the the passenger door and I slip out, basically like head first onto the sidewalk and uh, prop myself up <laughs> against the uh, the telephone pole that's outside my house. And I'm just sitting there covered in fake blood and makeup and looking like an absolute train wreck. So I I'm guessing that in the time that I was sitting there and Zero was there taking all the equipment out and putting it in my garage, um, somebody must have seen what probably looked like a, a brutal accident and called the cops. So the cops roll up on my block and this, this uh, female cop comes out and very nice. She just, she shines the light in my eyes. I'm like, holy fuck, that's bright. Um, and, uh she, uh, she's like, do you know where you live? And I'm like, I live right there. I was like, I'm, I'm right, I'm on home stretch. I can, I can do this. And then the other guy comes out and he's got like his hand on his holster. He doesn't know what's going on at this point. He's like, all I see is makeup, fake blood. And he's like, I'm ready to shoot if need be. <laughs> and so uh, Zero, Zero explains to him like, everything's fine. He just had a lot to drink. We're coming from a show, all that stuff. And so they take off. Uh, Zero at this point carries me into my house. And he's trying to get me to lay down, and I'm just not having it. So I go into my fridge. I take out some leftovers. I, like, start eating the leftovers. Um, and then I walk. I take my shirt off because it was, you know, covered in throw-up. And uh, I run out to the back porch. And I think in my head, because I, at the time I was in a real bad way, and uh, I was so messed up and so depressed and all that stuff, like, in the previous band, and just the, the time frame around that, um, that I was like, my pool's right outside. If I just jump in there, I'll just sink. I can't swim because I. Oh, shit. Sorry, <laughs> oh, Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I, I'll just sink to the bottom and I'll just go out peacefully and that'll be it. And that's, that's just where I, I was that like messed up. And <laughs> But essentially, and, uh, you, you basically fell your face plant. Yeah, so essentially, that was the game plan, I think, in my drunken mind. And then when I went to go through the back door shirtless, um, I just tripped on something and fell face first. And so the, the single cover art of Songs of Serenity is actually a picture that Zero had taken of me just face first on the on the patio. Yep. Um, and the rest is history. But yeah, he, he heaved me up. He picked me up. He brought me back to the couch. He was like, stay. <laughs> and then he took off. So it's it's both a funny story, but also a story of Zero basically like in, in a way ass. saving my ass. Yeah. In more than one in, in more than one situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of like what what is a good crew story from like between my own stuff and between when I like was trying to get into uh carnies. Um so Hmm. That's a good question, actually. Um, I think I don't know. I don't know if I could quantify it as like a crew story, but um, when we were all out of makeup and around each other. Oh no, you know what? Um, I guess I guess I could quantify the Halloween party as like a crew story in yeah. a sense because they had invited me out to a Halloween party, which we um, which we have named the disaster party. Yeah, that party ended up going to absolute crap. Um, because a mutual friend of ours, Brendan, got in like annihilated much like this and, one yeah and was very inconsolable and like all over the place but that was and just that was just one aspect of it what some, some other guy ended yeah. up smoking like k2 in my backyard when i specifically said no, like no drugs and then yeah. he broke my freaking bathroom door while he was autoerotic asphyxiating himself in my bathroom like you awesome. think we're joking <laughs> but we're not it was yeah. it was it was like actual. I I had never, up to that point I had never seen anything like that in my life, and I hope I never have to again. Yeah. Yep. Um. The band had requested that I take a shot of whiskey with them, and oh, it's right. the first and only time I will ever do that. Um. Because for one thing, I really don't drink a whole lot. I'm a hyper lightweight to begin with, so mm -hmm. I really I can't get too drunk. Otherwise, I will pass the fuck out. Um. And I'll, I'll get, like, super sleepy, so I have to, like, drink, like, a shit ton of Monster or, like, Bang yeah. or whatever energy drink there is at the time to wake back up and sober and like... soberfy again. Um, and at one point or another, um, during all of that, I got, like, really sleepy and started to fall asleep on the couch. Um, but um, I was supposed to help the former drummer drive home, and I was like, oh, I don't mind. I, I, at that point, I had completely sobered up. I was completely fine to drive back home. I was like not like feeling like 
you know, I was not feeling totally not okay. So I was feeling pretty all right at the time. Like I could see pretty clearly I'm good usually on the road. Um, if I'm like coming out of being like slightly drunk at the very least, cause like I didn't feel like too drunk entirely, but like the shot of whiskey like made me very like floaty and sleepy <laughs> so i just needed to sit on the couch for a while and like i basically just ended up taking a nap um but i ended up not being able to drive the uh the drummer home and the guitarist at the time um, sort of like oh, got on my ass about that and i was just like uh the, the only upside that came out of it was in the beginning i was uh, when i was supposed to come in as keyboardist um the uh sampler at the time nix and i for some reason she just did not we we clashed at first yeah. without really meaning to i was like super friendly and ready to go i was like ready to make friends with all these people she nix, was, like, nix yeah, was under yeah. the impression that uh we were like butting her from the band and i was like that's not it at all we still need something yeah. to do with the samples we just also wanted to incorporate a keyboardist but yeah, yeah. and i was yeah, like it's, I was not, ready it's to, like, not worth dwelling on that anymore though well yeah. No. yeah i was ready to like you know have fun with her i thought that it would be like hey let's like do some harmonies for the stage let's like dance together at certain points right. like that was what i was prepared to say to her she was shut down completely and i was just like oh gosh oh, um, okay. i hope i didn't upset anybody that is that well, that's when me. at the party you guys um, kind of yeah and, and at the party she was just like hey I'm sorry I like acted all like mean towards you at first you're actually really cool I was like oh thank you and so we ended up getting along uh pretty quickly after that um we haven't talked in a hot minute but she still every now and again will like poke at my uh Facebook feed and we'll just talk yeah um, this got very off topic for on, <laughs> sorry. on another note your newest videos just came out yes yeah or conception well conception and orbit are technically on the album two songs but it, it, the video is one. They're they're connected video. songs on the album, so we just turned it into one long video. And then there's <laughs> Mistress of the Freaks. And Mistress of the Freaks, yep. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna play a little clip of it for everybody. All right. Nice. <laughs> That's and ending with me throwing up. <laughs> That's conception. Uh, yeah. And as you can see, what is being conceived is uh, whatever came out of uh, <laughs> black ooze. Black blood. Um, that's, how, that's how KK Reaper uh, reproduces. That was actually. Oh God. <laughs> we don't need mini reapers. So how did you come up with the idea? Um. So the. Obviously, you know, the idea for the album, because it's a concept album, came first before the video. And basically, when I had went forth with the uh, the new project after leaving Carney's, I um, actually sat on this very couch, yeah. plugged, in a, plugged in his keyboard to my computer, and simply found a synth preset on Logic. And he had, I think he had held down his sync and pressed one key, and that became the ambience that plays throughout that entire Thing of conception. It sounded it sounded to me when I was uh, playing the pipe ambience like it was outer space from like inside of a spaceship or something of that nature. You know, it sounded like uh, you know what you would hear in like sci-fi films and all that. So um, at the time when Carney's officially uh, broke up and it was kind of like a rough breakup, you know, because we had been together for as long as we had. Um, and then we had gone on, you know, I had, I had gotten a, a new job at that point to start, you know, recuperating some money that I've spent, you know, I blew all on the Carney's production. And then, uh, I had gotten sober for a couple of months before I could kind of go back into it and not be like a raging alcoholic. Um, and while I was drying myself out, it felt like the twilight, like it felt like just this very gray area and it like it, it felt like i was in space it felt like i was floating in space aimlessly with no direction which was nice in its own way because it took a lot of the stresses off of my shoulders of the previous band and everything that was going on in the in the previous years um but 
the uh sorry i got distracted is is joey okay yeah it's fine oh uh, yeah he's um fine. but yeah so so um it had taken the weight off my shoulders from the previous years and everything that was going on with that um but it also felt like i had no direction to go in and i was struggling to figure out like all right i know i want to revamp kk reaper and i know i want to revamp the story and what it's all about and all this stuff so when we sat down and we did the pipe ambience i was like okay well that, that's kind of what my head sounds like you know that's that's the 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 static noise that's going through my brain on a constant right now after being through so much and now it's just done basically art, um, art imitating life <laughs> right yeah so when uh, when I decided on the name for conception, I was like, "All right, well, this is the this is the new beginning. This is a new era," and so uh, I decided to go with the space theme based on how I was feeling, how I felt like I was in this just in orbit. Um, and, the, and, and the next song was called Orbit. Yeah, right. So so that's basically like where that like where it personally comes from. Um, the storyline itself takes on KK Reaper going from uh universe to universe from planet to planet uh and basically telling the people on each of these planets and each of these universes if you don't stop doing x whatever it is that they're doing that is you know hurting their hurting their earth or hurting what you know their surroundings um you're going to lose it and and this is all going to collapse in on on itself uh so the planet that kk is on in conception in the video is you know, wherever it is, it's it's in the, for, for our purpose, it is in the Milky Way galaxy, you know, in our universe, but it's some distant, distant planet from us where, you know, he did all he could, he tried to help them, and that's why when he throws up, he's actually throwing up uh, black tar. Like, I'm throwing up black tar, because uh, that's how dense the the smog in the air has become on that, on that planet. Um, and it's supposed to be somewhat Social commentary. Yeah, right. It's yeah. supposed to be somewhat reminiscent of what is happening today with the the uh, pollution in the world today, um, and everything that's happening to our environment. Uh, so, when you go into orbit, it is reflecting um, the points of that, uh, you know, based on our Earth. But for the sci-fi Im imagining of it, it is basically him talking about all the planets that he's been to and all the planets do the same thing and they all destroy themselves. So when it goes into the rest of the album, it goes to transmissions from planet earth. I'm getting a signal that's coming in. It's not coming in very clear because I'm far away from earth. Um, and I can't transmit back, but I'm getting these little clips and each sure. of the songs on the album after that point is one of those clips. And that's why mistress of the freaks takes place. You know, it says like incoming transmission earth year, 1959. They're coming in from all different, uh, points in time. And adding to that, that that's kind of the, the, the kind of the way, there's one thing a lot of people will take away, and, I, and I've heard this from a lot of people. Why, do they, why, does the song, why does the album sound so different from song to song? And, and even like genre-wise, I was like, the, the, the workaround with that was, the, the real reason was uh, KK couldn't think of, a, of, a, of one genre to do. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, and, and, number, and number two, uh, it's basically to, the, the storyline reason is because the transmissions are basically from different periods of time. So that's why they all sound different. Yeah. Because essentially, besides the few storylines all the time, almost all the songs are in its entirety, just him sitting in the spaceship watching the screen and imagining he's in there. So like Mr. to the Freaks, that's not actually happening. What is, what is happening is, is like he is watching the transmission and um, and basically um, self inser self inserting himself into it. Yeah, imagining what it would be like to be on this planet and to be part of what they, their customs, you know. Yeah. And then there's this whole thing that um, you were telling me in the beginning of um, the idea that uh, this was kind of leading into something of a. Uh, Reaper verse, where basically the old version of KK, where it was the regulator of the Carnage of Chaos, he left, and then this one comes in, so it's just like, oh, we have an entirely new KK. Who is this guy? And he doesn't know who any of like his old like, yeah. like his yeah, followers yeah, yeah, are. Yeah, you so better like, not say that to uh, Marvel Comics. My, my oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so te technically speaking, yeah. in that instance, um. Uh, Tic Tac and Penny are technically two of his followers from like his past life that sort of like rejoined uh, him in this life. It, on the album, there's a song called Channel Two where the character named Tommy, basically who is part of the we we are basically 
the gaggle of as, as yeah, she the, would call the gaggle of, of misfits who, fo who follow him and called him back. But one of the members of our group, who's technically not a band member but a character on the album named Tommy, uh, contact contacts K uh, K Reaper. And that's how I'm getting the transmissions and transmissions from planet Earth. Those are coming from this this kid, Tom. And essentially, we are we we are also we are basically uh, also members of his, his crew, basically, and basically through the power of, of rock and roll, we uh, and through the power of rock and, <laughs> and the power roll, of rock, friendship, <laughs> rock and roll, and well, but basically, as see. as you'll okay. see in the in the subsequent albums, you'll you'll start to see. I mean, really. The idea of the multiverse is something that if you dig deep enough into my previous work and understand... Because KK what Reaper is, has existed for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing the KK Reaper character since probably, like, 7th grade, 6th grade, so yeah, was? that's like 2009, 2010. Yeah. Um, and, uh, what's that? Can you make me feel old now? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, no, I, yeah, so on a weird side note, you ever have you ever seen? Uh, I assume you've seen like the the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Every single yeah. time we look, we look at something, every single time like we find something, I'm like, "Hey, KK, so and so, this thing is like 20 years old now, and this thing is 15 years old or 18 years old." That's we just like, feel like Tim Allen yeah. and freaking looking in the mirror. Uh, yeah, right. Those are <laughs> beard grows in and we feel, we feel old. Yeah, I mean, especially when I when I look back at KK Reaper from. Originally, I created the character to be basically like this Tales from the Crypt s character who would introduce these little horror short films that I would make, okay. and he would he would be the uh, the guy who introduced the show and then closed out the show. Um, and we only got a couple episodes deep. You know, we were really young at the time, so we didn't know what we were doing exactly. Um, we were just sort of running around um, making these films for the fun of it. Uh, but that is like the first uh, incarnation of. Uh, of KK. And then after we stopped filming those, I continued on with the alias and we started doing like I, everything I did, I did under that. So there's a lot of different projects that incorporated a KK. And so when I started writing on this and I started writing about how, you know, KK goes from planet and universe and all these different areas, I started to write it almost as if there was like an alternate timeline. So okay. the car the carnies of KK uh, the car the carnies of the chaos, car of chaos, <laughs> the carnies of chaos KK Reaper exists in a different scenario entirely. Different so that's why it's like Back to the Future where there's like a different yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, if, if you if you listen close enough to like the storyline that was going on with the carnies of chaos, the first album that we were if you were, if you were able to decipher it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's you know it's it's something that is kind of it. Like I said, you'd have to dig really deep to understand that. That's sort of my own little like, haha, you know. Um, but the uh, the idea is that the Carnies of Chaos, KK Reaper, had existed on this planet already, and that's why Tic Tac, Penny, and the guy Tommy, and Two Cuts, and all them, they all know who that who KK Reaper is, and they're trying to reach him again to come back to help them because the Earth is in dire need, you know, like the Earth is dying. Um, and so in the second album you'll you'll come to see hopefully we'll you know we're getting the ball rolling on that as we speak and hopefully it'll be done um sometime in the near future uh the second album is called the new normal and it's basically where basically if, at, at, it, production it, right now it picks up from where the first album leaves off which is kk crash lands to earth and the general guy in big bother general maxwell um finds out that he had crash land and he's like we can't let another reaper escape we can't let another reaper like come into the society he'll ruin it all and so he is uh in the second album going to be on the hunt for kk reaper as well as tommy who now knows that kk has landed and that he wants to go find him so he could bring him back to like their their base the um quarters. but so they uh they they realize they realize when they KK has a cult. when they yeah <laughs> when, when, bad. when they pick me up though they realize that I am not the same KK as from before but they convince me to then help them still so that's the idea behind that like little multiverse thing. So at this time, would you like to promote where you could be found? Um. So Spotify, uh, Apple Music, YouTube. Pretty, music. Well, yeah. If you go <laughs> if you go to kkreaper.com there is uh, pretty much subsections for literally everything that I've ever done. 
Um, if you go to the video page, you'll find uh, any previous interviews. You'll find uh, the music videos, uh, some of my short films from years past. And uh, if you go to the music or the discography tab, you'll find uh, music from my solo career, the, the album A New Era. And then you'll find the KK Reaper and the Crimes of Chaos album, uh, Admit One. And there's links at the top that will bring you to whatever platform you like to listen on. We also have our own separate Instagram, so you can find myself at Chaos Girl Penny. You can find this one over here uh, at Tic Tac's Domain. Domain. Although it, I I do warn you, it's pretty. You probably won't find it unless you see me tagged on one of their things because I wrote it in a lot of weird lettering. Yeah, yeah. but Tic Tac's Domain, if you type that in with the at symbol, it still comes up because they, you know, you can't yeah. make weird letters in that. Yeah. But um, yeah, and uh, two cuts. Uh, his it's just two cuts. Handle. KK Reaper Bang. Yeah. Right. Um, so you can find the rest of the band. You can also find uh, the crew, because the crew is also still part of the show. Uh, Lilith Official, K-A-P, is uh, our Merch Girls uh, Lilith's um, Instagram handle. And uh, Zero, X, uh, X-E-R-O, Zero the Zombie, is uh, Z- uh, our Roadie Zero's Instagram handle. Very technical. He's not a zombie at all. He he calls we do bring him back to life on stage sometimes. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's technically like not really like a true zombie, but like I guess in like his own. He's already he's, yeah. he's, he's in own... one way a resurrected corpse. Yeah. In a sense. So yeah, so that's where you can find all our stuff. You know, hopefully, uh, if you're watching this interview, uh, you know, to the to the viewers at home, if you can. Uh, Subscribe to my my YouTube. We're trying to get the subscribers up there. We're going to be releasing a lot more content soon. We're trying to do a music video for every song on the New Era album. Basically, um, making a movie out of it. Yeah, yeah. essentially. A and running. buy our merch. <laughs> yes, please. Oh my God, I've got if, if you tons look on of YouTube, there, 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 there's a there's a video of us advertising the merch for uh, the Fourth of July, and it's that that what was it, all of a two minute video. Uh, could, has about it was 20 minutes of outtakes. Of, yeah, yeah. It, it was the full length of the song Political Bukkake. And then we yeah. had like a bunch of extra B-roll stuff. Well, basically, and... in, in full, <laughs> we were sitting on this very couch and it basically, we decided to not take it seriously whatsoever and it became one giant shit post. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially. The, the Political Bukkake merch line came out for 4th of July we, uh, yeah, weekend and uh, we made that promo for that. So there is... Just general KK Reaper merch, and then there's uh, KK Reaper merch specific to Political Bukaki with uh, Never Spit It Out lip balm and like all this other stuff. We had uh, red, red condoms. Yeah, red co- red red Political Bukaki condoms. Uh, um, swim give yourself a sad way because no one else is gonna ever use these. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'd like to thank you guys for your time, and I will let you guys know when this is posted. Thank awesome. you. Thank you for having us. Have a good night. Peace. Peace.